Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. I hope you guys are having a nice day. In today's video, let's talk about something called unit testing. So a lot of you guys have been asking me, you know, what does unit testing use for and how do we kind of apply it to our applications? So in today's video, I would like to break down the entire topic of unit testing into kind of three smaller sections. Now, the first of which is, you know, what exactly is unit testing? And then secondly, we will talk about how we apply unit testing to our applications and why we even use it in the first place. And then lastly, I'm going to go through a couple of very simple examples as to how to actually implement uh, some unit test cases inside of your application. All right, so before we can even make sense of the whole idea of unit testing, we really need some kind of application context. So the way I'm going to do that is to go over our Instagram application right now. All right, so hopefully you guys can see the simulator on the right side of your screen here. And uh, basically we have the Instagram Firebase application loaded up on the home feed that kind of looks like this, right? And down on uh, each one of these individual posts below, we have a timestamp that tells you, you know, how many minutes ago this post was posted. Down here it says one hour ago and then one week ago, you know, so on and so forth. So given this kind of context of our application, uh, what is the point of unit testing, right? So let me kind of explain to you why we have unit testing by looking into the method that actually gives me this 20 minutes ago string. So this method here, time ago display, does some magic with the number of seconds in a minute, and then it kind of goes inside of this if check, finally, giving you some kind of time ago display down here. All right, and I also went over this algorithm uh, in a video I posted a couple of days ago. So if you guys are interested in checking that out, check for the link in the description. Uh, anyhow, this is our method. And let's say uh, someone, perhaps a junior developer, uh, comes, you know, comes on board, joins the iOS team, and doesn't exactly know or understand the code base very well. And as a result, they go inside of here and change min to mim. So you can actually run this code and there's no warning, no compiler errors, because it's just a simple string change. So doing this causes your application to run, but instead of it saying mins ago, now it says mims ago. So I, th I consider this a pretty embarrassing uh, bit of code to present to your users, uh, especially with you know misspellings. I, I find it to be very unprofessional, to say the least. So uh, with unit testing, you can actually check for mistakes like this and to prevent them from your users ever seeing it. So how do we do that with unit testing? Well, if you set up your uh, project with some kind of unit testing target, which I'll explain later, uh, with this target comes a test case file, which is Instagram demo test right here. Inside of this test case, you have this little test time ago strings method. And if you run it right now, it'll actually show a failure inside of the left side uh, of the screen along with the line numbers. So this will actually flag with a X like that. And it tells you exactly what the problem is on the little display here, which says five mins ago, five mims ago, is not equal to five mins ago. So with just this simple three lines of code and this test case, you can catch the potential problems that can occur due to junior developers uh, not correctly modifying your code. So how does, how does this work in the real you know, software world is that through this process called continuous integration, every time someone commits new code to your code repository, you fire all of your tests. And if you know, even one test fails, the entire team will get an email uh, you know, describing what exactly was changed and who made that change and who needs to go and fix it. So now that you kind of understand how a test case is, you know, ran and somewhat how it's written, let's go into exactly implementing a test case right now. Okay, so moving on to how to actually integrate some very, very basic unit tests inside of your application. Uh, I have loaded up inside of Xcode a single view application that I just created. Let me just run this and show you the blank 
white screen that you normally get when you uh, create a new application, right? So this uh, sample app here doesn't do very much and it actually doesn't include a unit test target. So if you don't have that target, what you can do is to go into the project here. Down below, you'll find the plus and that will allow you to get this uh, unit testing bundle. So unit test gives you that, double click, and then it gives you some kind of product name. Just hit finish. And on the left side here, you get this target. And along with that, on the project explorer, you also get this test case file. So there's a lot of stuff in here. Uh, what I want to do to make this easier to follow is just remove everything. Now with that kind of uh, all set up properly, you can hit this little play button that occurs or that shows up in this little diamond. It launches the application and then somewhere down here that you can't see, it says test succeeded. Okay, so to write your very, very first test case, you have to just declare a new function and prefix it with the word of test. And this one I'll just call test hello world and end it like that with a bracket. And inside of this, we can declare some kind of variable. I will call it hello world and let it be of type string optional like that. Okay. So what I want to do is to kind of assert with xct assert nil that hello world is actually nil. So this test case will actually pass because hello world will be nil uh, when we instantiate it and because we don't change it, it remains nil until line 16. So running that test gives us the green check mark and what I can do now is to perhaps set hello world to an actual string that says hello world. So hello world like that. And then now that the string is an actual value, we can assert it to be some kind of string assert equal like so. And I will use the hello world variable. On the right side, we'll actually use the hello world string like that. Now, if you type in anything else that is not what it's supposed to be, it's not going to be equal. Hence, when you run the test now, it will flag this as a failed test. And then down below, once the test is finished running, it will actually give you a little log as to you know the results of your test. We have executed one test and one failure like that. And it kind of tells you uh, what the actual test failure is. To fix this, you would go back here, remove the one, run the test again by clicking on the left area right here. Uh, you can also click on product and test to run all of your test cases if you want to do so. And now that the test is valid and everything checks out, we have the green check mark on the left. Okay. So this test case is a little bit contrived and uh, doesn't do a whole lot. And we would now rather go into a real world uh, test case where you have to actually test your application code itself. So what I mean is that, let's say for example, inside of somewhere in uh, your project, you have this extension. I'm going to create it down here, extension on an integer. And I want to, let's say perhaps, uh, create some kind of easy way for me to calculate the square value of an integer. And uh, insert, inside of here, I will just call it return self times self. So that's the square of, you know, two equals two times two for the square value. So this right here, I can now call inside of view to load perhaps. And let's just use two square like that. And I'll print out this actual value. And uh, that hopefully you guys already know is the value of four. And then down in the console below, as it runs the application, we get four down here. So pretty simple stuff and you know, pretty basic. Let me just comment that out like that. And we now have this square method. So how do we, how do we actually test this square method does what it actually does and not, for example, something like uh, self cubed like so. And the way we do that is to first type in a new method inside of our unit testing case. And let's just use test square int. And let's do some actual uh, calculation of the square value of, let's say, perhaps three. So I'm going to say let value equals three. 
and then value, you can call some kind of square method, but it doesn't really show up inside of the autocomplete. In fact, if you try to call this method, uh, it's going to say that you can't uh, call square because it doesn't have this method called. So in order to actually uh, have your application code available in your test cases, uh, inside of Swift, you have to type in testable and then import the actual uh, project name of unit test examples. And once you do that, this square method is now available. And then we can set squared value equals that. And if you run this right here, because you don't actually have any assertion, this will pass and you should be okay there. So it's going to run and then everything is going to pass. Now, in order to make sense of this uh, test square int method, you actually have to assert, let's see, xc to assert this value, a uh, square value, equal to the value of perhaps nine. So we will run this and it's going to pass, hopefully, because the value is indeed nine, squared value of three should be nine. Okay, so our application is launched and then it passed uh, with the green check mark right there. It also tells you uh, how many tests it ran. You want to run all of the tests, click on the uh, in casing class test case guy over there and it will run two tests instead of just the one which is indicated by this bottom value right there now the way to kind of make sure your test actually works is that if you go ahead and command click into the square and modify the code to be incorrect you can now go back to your test and run it again and then it'll say Nope, your squared value is actually, uh, I believe, 27. Is that the cube of three? So let's see, it says 27 is not equal to nine. And here is kind of a very, very simple way of, you know, understanding how unit test case are written. Okay, so hopefully you found this brief introduction to unit testing helpful. Subscribe to the channel for more videos about unit testing. You can also check out the Instagram course uh, using the link below. Keep on coding guys, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye guys.